At the end of 1993, you couldn't walk out on the school's playground without hearing the epic phrase, Go Go Power Rangers. That's right, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had aired, and nothing would ever be the same again. One of the last big toy lines and pop culture phenomenons to really stir things up, and to create a demand where toy stores were craving for more stock than they could get in. The wave of Power Ranger mania came with its own difficulties as you had to be careful for bootlegs, knockoffs, and ripoff shows, trying to cash in on the craze of repurposed Japanese stock footage. And that's what we're talking about on this Ed's Retro Geek Out. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel for more toy history, and now it's Morphin Time! Power Rangers. I have to say, at first, I didn't really like it, but as the Green Ranger story unfolded, I was hooked as a kid. I needed the toys, I had my first crush, I had a crush on Kimberly, who didn't? She's an angel. My turtles had to make room for Japanese import toys. It was time to grow up, leave cartoons behind, and watch live action shows. Here's me unboxing the Ninja Zord, and here's me with my Zords in my 30s. But where did this TV show really come from? The history traces back to Saban, a TV production company. For Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Saban drew inspiration from Japanese kit shows like Super Sentai. The show was in essence the combination of the Super Sentai stock footage and newly shot footage with American actors. These were teenagers with ninja moves and real teenage problems. They could forget whenever they morphed into the Rangers. Super Sentai had been around for decades in Japan and had multiple seasons from which they could create a show, and the TV show always reminded me of a cool Godzilla-like movie. When the show first aired in August of 1993, it was a craze that took over right away. The actors could host TV shows, they licensed the brand for merchandise and food tie-ins to the max. As a kid, you could watch the show and read the Power Ranger magazine. By season two, they were reaching over 5 million kids a day. A live action movie was the next step, and even though it maybe hasn't aged well, it still holds a nostalgic place in my heart. The toys had to follow in order to support the mass demand. The action figures came in two sizes, you got the Zords, the role playing weapons, and a playset that was released by Bandai. Luckily, they also had access to the toys that were already made for the original Super Sentai series. So they had a big archive to just pick toys from. You had to repurpose Super Big Post series made for the Super Sentai, and that translated to the Deluxe Power Rangers, an 8-inch set of figures. At the same time, you had 4.5-inch Shigokin-style figures that came with battle bikes, and of course, my favorites, the Zords, which were also redecos of Deluxe Mecha Toys released by Bandai Japan for the Super Sentai series. Role playing was also a big part for a Power Rangers fan. All you needed as a kid was a flashy colored bodysuit, a Power Ranger helmet, and one of the many role playing toys or morphers they had out on the store shelves. And you know, when a popularity wave goes up, people try to get in on the wave. The success of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers didn't go unnoticed, so the concept was copied, keeping the parts they thought were the success to the concept. In 1994, at least three more shows slipped into Kit's TV rotation with the same characteristics. A group of ninja teens, alien monsters, a Zordon-like master to guide the team, and usually another hype thing to kind of differentiate itself. <laughs> Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad from 1994 was an adaptation of a Japanese show called Gridman the Hyper Agent, combining guys in robot or monster suits but within your computer. Yeah, in the 90s computers were cool, right? Team Samurai the good guys are kids who are also in a band and as they get zapped into the computer space during a power surge, they come back equipped with a strange device to their wrists and they find out that they could transform into Servo 
and other parts of Team Samurai, who has to defeat the Mega Virus Monsters. So pretty much action fighting footage, but within a computer. So over here you pretty much had the Japanese action fighting parts, and the American parts that they shot were just kids on their computers hacking in the 90s. And the toys were provided by none other than Playmates. You could even see some of the accessories from Turtles being reused for this toy line. Then came Tattooed Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. That's... That's, that's a long name. This is one, a remarkable name, and two, really the bottom of the barrel. I honestly had forgotten all about this one until I started looking up things for this video. And then suddenly it hit me. I watched this show back in the day. Back in the day it was horrible, now it's just hilarious. In this ripoff, each teenager was given a tattoo that would unlock the power of colorful superhero shiny spandex. And if the evil monsters they were fighting was too dark, they could combine into Nitron. That was their type of sword combiner thing. Apart from a little merchandise, it doesn't seem like they got any toys made already into Power Rangers. VR Troopers was also available in the Toy Store's video game section and with action figures by Kenner. And I still want an Ultimate Ryan Steel action figure. Masked Rider came out in 1995 and was also developed by Saban. Masked Rider appeared in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and then got his spin-off show. As the Masked Rider, the main character Dex protects Earth and fights various monsters. He can activate his suit by yelling, Ectoface activates. Toys were also done by Bandai so they looked very similar to the Power Ranger toys. Unfortunately, the show didn't perform well and the toys didn't sell enough so they cancelled the line after the first season. In 1996, there was another effort by Saban, this time Big Bad Beetleborgs, with toys by Bandai and some really cool role-playing toys as well. Big Bad Beetleborgs was a later Americanization of stock footage in which three teenagers enter a haunted house and come out as superheroes, when a ghost grants them a wish. They wish to become their favorite superheroes, but in doing so, also bring the villains of their superheroes into their world. They used footage from Joku B-Fighter and B-Fighter Kabuto. The show was a hit, but due to there just not being enough stock footage to keep the seasons going, they had to pull the plug on this one. And it's the same problem they ran into for VR Troopers after only two seasons. So by now, you couldn't even turn on a TV without watching one of these wannabe Power Rangers or the real deal. With the success of the TV show and the first movie, The Power Rangers Powerhouse was creating shortages each holiday season. So if you can't find nothing but Billy's and Trini's on the shelf pegs, you turn to those toys that kind of look like a Power Ranger. Now when it comes to bootlegs or knockoffs, all you need was a couple characteristics. For Masters of the Universe, it was a barbarian with over-the-top muscles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, any animal as long as it was green, and Power Rangers allowed any action figure with a helmet to be turned into a toy a parent could easily mistake for the real thing. All you needed was bright blue, red, yellow, black, green, pink, with a white and black checkered scheme and a dinosaur or animal on the chest. Also, there had been two decades of Super Sentai toys in Japan that could easily be modified into bootlegs and knockoffs. In the end, the bootleg and knockoff Power Rangers were everywhere. I remember standing in store having to choose between a real Power Ranger or a Fife Pack which looked almost like the real deal. But the real Power Ranger fan in me just knew something wasn't right. So that is how you ended up with Mega Rangers, who were still fully poseable. Nothing was sacred, the evil aliens, the Zorts, nothing was safe from getting a bootleg or a knockoff. And here's a couple we're gonna take a closer look at. Super Warriors bootlegged the Automorphin concept and provided the same incentive for the price of one official Ranger. You got a pack of five, all with a golden chest plate, coin, blaster, and Trini somehow got her own weapon. Then you had the Super Falco Power Perdu, which came released on a card with a really bootleg Power Rangers logo and later a blue, lesser misleading card. The toys were almost exact copies of the Automorphers once again, and all the toys came with the same blaster and Zack's weapon. You could tell the floodgates were right open 
Mega Rangers, Action Figures, Mighty Rangers, Mighty Power Fighters, Super Robotic Rangers, Power Hero, Mega Rangers. And what I really want to know in the comments down below is how you would call your own knockoff brand of Power Ranger toys. Would it be Teenage Neutron Ninja Squad Ninjas? Cause two times ninja is even better. And obviously we have to take a look at some of the knockoffs, like the Sonic Rangers, where they just took a light-up gimmick from a Robocop knockoff and added colors. These were released in 1994 by Soma, and as you can read on the card, they come with a light-up visor, three safety weapons, and movable arms and legs. The next one is the Atomic Ranger Warriors, released by Lanard as an alternative toy to Power Rangers. And just like the Lanard Toys G.I. Joe knockoffs, these still have their own charm with big weapons and silver or gold armor plates next to their unicolor paint scheme. Back in the day, I had so many knockoff Power Ranger toys just because the toy store where I was going, they couldn't keep the toys on the shelves. They were selling out so fast. But one of these knockoffs have been one of my favorite toys ever. These are the Power Forces, released by New Ray in 1994. They were more in scale with a G.I. Joe figure and had the same articulation, but they were just a bit bulkier. They matched with the Power Rangers as they were a team of bright colored heroes going by the names of Frank, Otto, Rick, Charlie, Eddie, and Sandy. I was instantly drawn to Frank the guy with the Cobra altered helmet. It was all I needed to really pique my interest to these toys, and they also came with their own story on the back of the cards. The six powerful leaders of the universe join into one to become the Power Forces, to fight against all evil invaders of the planet. The Power Forces are backed up by a special duty unit called Workbot Teens. Their main duty is to reconstruct all cities destroyed by the evil invaders. Dino Patrol and Power Bikes driven by the Power Forces are fully armed with high-tech weapons as well as the city constructors are well equipped for the site exploring and repairing. The Power Forces are ready to prevail over the evil, heavy, metal, evil dino. That's two times evil. The evil Tyrannosaurus Parasolophus and JR. This was definitely like a knockoff that went to the next step. Obviously, the knockoff had already come out in one way or another, but they combined all of the molds they could get and toy concepts and turn it into these power forces. Now these toys weren't bad and it came with lots of accessories. It's actually too bad they didn't do a cartoon for these or like a live action show. The original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers would last for three seasons and after that you would get a mini series called Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers which led into the next incarnation of the franchise. Power Rangers Zeo and a lot more incarnations would follow with their own bootlegs and knockoffs. I would like to give special thanks to my buddies Empire Toys 1138 and Javaho Creations for the help with this episode. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for weekly 80s and 90s content. Leave a like and leave a comment down below on how you first found out about Power Rangers. If you want to do more for the channel, you can always head out to my Patreon page. Thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And if you want to buy a shirt, there's a link down below on the video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.